Welcome back. We have breaking news tonight. The acting attorney general of the United States, Sally Yates, who was a holdover from the Obama administration, a former prosecutor from Georgia, was fired tonight by the president of the United States. And we want to read a statement here. This is from the White House and it's just come out. The acting attorney general, Sally Yates, has betrayed the Department of Justice by refusing to enforce a legal order designed to protect the citizens of the United States. Ms. Yates is an Obama administration appointee who is weak on borders and very weak on illegal immigration. She's going to be uh, replaced by a new acting attorney general, Dana Buente, that's how, I'm, and I apologize, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, who is the U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia. We're joined now by our old friend, Howie Kurtz of Media Buzz, who, by the way, has covered government uh, in Washington for more decades than he will admit. And the Justice Department. And this exactly. is a bombshell, talk. It is. Uh, and even as we speak, I am sure some of the president's detractors are typing up messages saying, likening this to Richard Nixon's Saturday Night Massacre yes. in 1973 when he fired an attorney general and an acting attorney general who refused to fire the Watergate special prosecutor, Archibald right. Cuck. The parallel is completely off because... Uh, because, as you just noted, Sally Yates, who is the acting attorney general, she worked for the Obama administration. She is not, as far as I can tell, making legal arguments against defending the president's right. action on immigration. She's saying it is a moral matter. So the president coming back and saying uh, this is pure politics. I'm sure some people will argue it the other way. That's debatable, but it is no Saturday Night Massacre. That's right. And that, that was the striking thing about Sally Yates's statement. Uh, that, that the Justice Department under her leadership would not be defending these, she didn't bother to make a legal case. In fact, the legal part was almost an addendum to the original statement, which said, in effect, I think this is wrong, and I'm, we're not going to do it. You know, when you're the government's lawyer, I mean, you can always resign as a matter of right. conscience. Sally Yates chose not to do that, but to make a statement that she's not going to defend this. So the new president, who hasn't been able to get his anointed Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, because the Senate Democrats are delaying that a bit, dragging their feet a bit, um, is within his rights to say, I'm going to put my own person in. But, of course, it will fuel the criticism of those who don't agree with this policy on immigration and temporary ban on refugees by saying, well, Trump had to get his own person in there. But, again, she's an Obama holdover, and that's a major part of this story. So what do you think the calculation, I mean, not, not, not that we know, but what, what would it seem to be, the thinking on this in the Trump administration? Well, look at it this way. If President Trump did nothing, he would have a Justice Department that was not going to go into court, and there are some proliferating lawsuits here right. to defend his position, which whether you agree with it or disagree with it, it is his right as president to issue that executive order. Or he could say, look, this is somebody from the Democratic administration who doesn't agree with this. Make, he makes the political charge. She's out of there. He puts his own person in, who will only be in there until the Sessions is confirmed. And at least then he has some legal backup from the DOJ, which is what any president would get uh, from his own or her own judgment. This, this would seem to increase the intensity of the nomination of Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Right. One could certainly see uh, additional incentive, shall we say, for Senate Democrats to drag their feet even further, uh, because when Jeff Sessions gets in there, obviously he's the hand-picked attorney general. Obviously yes. he was a big supporter of Trump during the campaign. You know, I was going to come in here with the news abuse examples. For example, Politico today has a big headline about this immigration controversy, emotional and divisive as it is. President Trump's first defeat. Uh, this is not by some random dude. It's by the editor-in-chief of Political Magazine, Blake Hounshell, who says the immigration order has created an international mess and a political embarrassment. Well, it's not a defeat. The president is going to get his way on this. It has certainly caused a lot of protests. There are a lot of right. people who don't like it. Democrats don't like it. Some world leaders don't like it. And it got off to a very rocky rollout. But I think now we've just raised the stakes, or Sally Yates raised it, to use a poker term. Yes. And president Trump raised her one, putting in his own person. Um, that will create a lot of criticism and media coverage. But if you strip away the politics of the moment, the president's entitled to have the Justice Department back him up unless he's ordering something illegal. I don't think anybody has suggested this is illegal. Also, how could you assess whether a policy is a victory or, or a defeat three days in? It seems a little premature to be making statements about whether it works or not, right? Unless it's not actually a legal assessment, but a political assessment. And, of course, you know, President Trump and his people uh, have made no secret of the fact that they think that they're getting very negative coverage in this first week. Look, he's done a lot of controversial things. It should be debated. This issue should be debated. But at the same time, if people are going to be declaring it a defeat... 48 hours after it happened. Remember, it's a temporary ban, people losing sight, 90 days, 120 days, depending on the situation. Um, that seems a little premature, and it seems to fuel uh, the White House notion that it is very hard to get an even break for this president uh, in his opening days What's, in what's interesting, now, this, most of this played out, the protests against these executive orders played out over the weekend, mm -hmm. and so not all of our viewers are going to be familiar with it, uh, with what happened. 
But I didn't see a great deal of debate. I instead saw a great deal of outrage, sort of undisguised outrage from the press, saying, in effect, this is immoral. And here is what is so surprising about that. President Trump said repeatedly during the campaign that this is what he was going to do. This is very similar to exactly what he talked about in the campaign, and yet many in the press acted as if it was some great shock that he took this action, maybe not really believing he would carry it out, thought it was just campaign rhetoric. Now, there is another side to this. The White House rushed this order. There were a lot of unintended consequences. Right. There was chaos of the evidence. All part of the story. And we should debate it. And it's a legitimate subject for journalistic scrutiny. But there's just a sense of shock, and I would say some negativity, that a new president actually did something, controversial as it was, that he promised during the campaign. Well, Stephen Miller, I thought, raised a really interesting question, maybe the core question, which is how do you not become Europe? How do you not wind up with a society that's totally divided along tribal lines and religious lines where everyone's freedoms are abridged? because of your immigration policy. There, there are two sides to this. There is the security side, how do we prevent right. terrorists from getting onto our shores. So the New York Daily News had a weeping Statue of Liberty looking only at the side of, you know, the humanitarian side. We'd right. love to take in these immigrants. We can't take in all the immigrants. Yes. And so that's a debate, but uh, I think the press coverage has focused pretty heavily on the side of uh, how this is somehow an affront to refugees. It, it's a real balancing act. It's hard to know exactly where the line should be drawn, but this is what Trump campaigned on. Yeah, I haven't heard. Have you seen any news outlets? I know you read them all mm -hmm. for a living. Have you seen any of them at least raise the substantive questions behind this? Like, yes. what, what should we do? Well, the New York Times had a front page headline that said there had been heavy criticism and some muted praise. And there have been people quoted, although many in the Republican Party are not embracing this. So it's not right. the usual left-right divide. Of course. Uh, so I've seen some newspaper accounts that have tried to give the arguments of both sides. Certainly uh, when Kellyanne Conway and, uh, and Reince Priebus and Sean Spencer got out on the Sunday shows, they made the case that was reported. Yeah. But by and large, the underlying tone is one of outrage, and Lester Holt did his NBC Nightly Newscast tonight, standing in a New Jersey park with the Statue of Liberty in the backdrop, making a statement there. Not a subtle message. <laughs> uh, Howard Kurtz, great to see you. Thank great you. Great to see you as well.